It's already been an incredible rookie campaign for Ataya Titikun. Not just that much sweeter. This week at the Toto Japan Classic, the 19-year-old will tee it up for the first time in her career on top of the Rolex World Rankings. Let's take a look at those rankings. She grew up in Thailand, by the way. It says her grandfather introduced her to the game it was going to be tennis or golf. She was a bit of a sickly child. They wanted to get her outside. She chose golf because tennis had too much running. It says she was inspired by the Jutanagarn sisters in Portland, Patlam of Thailand as well. And now she is the number one player in the world. Maddie, what impresses you the most about this teenager? Uh, everything. <laughs> when, you know, only the second player under 20 to reach world number one at, at 19 years, eight months and some days. Lydia Ko did it at 17 years and nine months back in 2015. But there was a quote that she made that stood out to me in particular because sometimes... I think in all walks of life, but in particular in golf, when you have very, very young people, they do something remarkable. And at times I wonder if they were able to break through simply because of the fact that they didn't know the weight of what they had just accomplished, right? And then they look back in retrospect and go, geez, I can't believe I did that. I don't get that impression with her. She said the following, I'm quoting, it is very special to get to the top, but much harder to retain it, close quote. And what struck me about that, and we heard the same thing from Rory McIlroy, both in the advice that he gave to Tom Kim, if you remember, mm. and what he said in reflection once he did, in fact, ascend back to number one of the game, where he was talking about how getting there is one thing, but staying there is another thing, or in, in his case, getting back there again, as he's done multiple times. So it is, that, it is that sense of presence that impressed me. And those same comments that I was just referencing, she also thanked her family mm. about how it was. It was as if it was not just her, but she brings other people into the fold, which certainly passes around the weight a little bit, if sure. you will. So it's all those things that, that impressed me so much. The fact that, you know, the, the first thing I was thinking about is how it compares to, from a historic standpoint, uh, Nancy Lopez, mm. right? Because Nancy Lopez, uh, if you compare her at, at age 20, wins before age 20, Matthias, too, Nancy Lopez had zero, but there should be a big asterisk right next to that because at age 20, Nancy Lopez won nine times in 1978. So I reached out to Nancy uh, last evening and I just, I, I wasn't looking for anything really heavy necessarily from, from Nancy Lopez. I was just looking for what do you think of what you're seeing? And, and she answered me very succinctly and said, uh, speaking of Athaya, she said she's awesome. Mm. I love that. And I love that you reached back in history for a legend to compare Athaya to. I, I reached for a more recent uh, star, a legend in Lydia Ko. And, and we see the, the teenage success that Athaya is having. And it reminded me a little bit of, of younger Lydia. And you see what Lydia did before the age of 20 with 14 wins compared to just the two. That Attire has, you see the age they became world number one, 19 for Attire, 17 for Lydia. But Attire is the youngest ever to win a professional event. Lydia once had that. Uh, Attire is younger, younger than Brooke Henderson was, younger than Rio Ishikawa was when he first won at the age of 15. And it's not just that she has two LPGA wins, she also has four ladies European tour wins to her credit as well. And to me, that counts. And I love how you started this segment by wondering if these teenagers even know how the sausage is made. Do they know what they're doing or will it be five, ten years from now? I used to cover the National Football League. We'd ask Steve Young, I was a 49ers beat writer, Steve, do you know if this feels like a Super Bowl season? Does this feel like a special team? And he would say, guys, I, I won't know until afterwards. Like, I won't know in week eight or week nine, but I might know in February when I look back on the season if we got eliminated in the wild card or did we hoist the Vince Lombardi trophy. And I, I just love, I think about that 25 years later, that when you're in the throes of it, when you're in the mix of it, you don't always know how you do what you do. It's fascinating, absolutely fascinating. Of course, this week, the LPGA Tour finishes its Asian swing in Japan with the Toto Japan Classic. It is a special week for this event as it returns the LPGA Tour to, for the first time since 2019. The Toto Japan Classic was held the last two years, but 
solely as a Japan LPGA event due to COVID-19 pandemic. Now, of course, it is back on the LPGA Tour. And with just two events left before the CME Group Tour Championship, here you can see a look at the top 10 on the race, the CME Globe. It is absolutely packed. We all know the magic number for the tour finale, of course, is 60, as only the top 60 players in the race to the CME Globe will qualify for the CME Group Tour Championship at Tiburon Golf Club. So over the next two weeks, what is your boldest prediction for the rest of the season? All right, so there's three events in total, including the CME Group Tour Championship. I got bold for you. I think Itaya Titikun will win two what? of the next three events. You ask for bold, and I'm going with bold. I think this young player is doesn't know how the sausage is made, and that's a good thing. Padraig Harrington talked about that at the PGA Championship at Kiowa. There's that innocence period. She is right in the middle of that where it is all good. It's Are all you stealing upside. My stuff? Am I stealing it? Yeah. Oh, I love it. I'm, I'm just uh, I'm confirming it. I'm, I'm piggybacking on you. I think that she's going to have a very special finish to what has already been a special season. You know, it's funny because here we're talking about the comparison is made between her and Lydia Ko, right? And right now, Lydia Ko is in the throes of chasing down three major awards. Yes. This, still this season. So, uh, you know, and I know it's, she, she's the, the, the changing of coach from, with, with Sean Foley and all that, that goes on into it, but I just don't believe that that is, it, I don't get a sense that it's tethered with a great deal of emotion or negativity or mm. distraction that many times a change of that stature would. Uh, I was mentioning this to you yesterday in, in yesterday's program. Uh, Sean Foley could do the X's and O's as well as any other coach in the world. We've seen that, right? But much like Butch Harmon, where he's more than just a swing coach, he becomes yeah. a mentor to the players. When it's Sean Foley and you talk to people that have worked with him, he tends to be almost golf's spiritual guide, I would, I would say. So even though they may not be working together from the standpoint of where's the club and position on the backswing or at the top or at impact, I, she has said that there, he's still a mentor. So I just don't see that as being a massive distraction. Lydia Ko strikes me as a player that is right now more comfortable in her skin than any other player in the game. Mm. We're talking about a legend in Lydia Ko. And you know what? That legend is still only 25 years old. Yeah. Let that sink in for a second. So I think, and, and save this video for a couple weeks down the road, I'm going to say that Lydia Ko wins the CME Group Tour Championship. I think, I think wow. she's that much on song. She's done it before. Uh, she could do it again. I was also considering Lydia. I don't think this is a major distraction. Saying goodbye to Sean Foley, I think it was probably in the works, but it could be a minor one. She's such a thoughtful human being that maybe even concerns about the perception of she's got them a lot going coming up in her she's life. Got a wedding she's yeah. planning. Absolutely. So I think those things make me slightly cautious as we look toward the end of this season, which is why I give a slight advantage to the 19-year-old Titty Cut. You know, I just think there's a different level of focus when you're actually in a race with someone else that's starting to come down to mm. a couple of primary yeah. individuals. And I think that's going to provide some more focus there too, to, to steal your word, <laughs> if I may.